Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brad Stone. I'm with soulandjazz.com. And uh, welcome back to what's become an annual tradition, uh, really going back many you know, decades, going back to the Gavin years. And uh, we're really delighted to uh, have, as part of Jazz Congress and, and uh, Jazz Week, the Jazz Jukebox jury back again. And we have a very uh, prominent, distinguished panel of jazz radio programmers here uh, this year. I'm just so delighted to have this group. Uh, I want to introduce them to you, and then I'm going to have them speak for a couple of minutes about their radio station, about their market, demographic, how many hours of jazz they program per week, that sort of information, because it's important. The idea behind this panel is for you to get a better understanding as to how jazz radio chooses music to be on the air. What are the parameters? And there are a lot of different parameters, and it's different for each station. So to really understand that process, you have to understand a little bit about the radio station. So I'm going to introduce the panel, and then they'll talk about their stations a bit. And then we'll get into the music. What we're going to hear music-wise are releases, um, predominantly releases that are going to be coming out in uh, 2020. So they haven't been released yet. This panel hasn't heard these, this new music yet. It was uh, specifically sent to me for this panel. So upcoming releases in the next three to six months mainly. So we're going to play a snippet and then this panel, each panelist will make a decision, well tentative decision let's say, uh, on whether they would program the music or not. If not, why not? If they program it, what kind of, uh, uh, how many spins would they give it? What kind of rotation would it be? And that sort of thing. So first of all, um, last year I invited a, uh, a, a prominent jazz radio programmer from Washington State to be here. She flew all the way across the country and then took ill right before the panel happened, so she wasn't able to appear. I am so delighted to have her back again this year and, uh, and to have her healthy, and that's Elizabeth Ferris from KEWU, Spokane, Washington. I hope you're healthy. Yes, I am healthy. Elizabeth is the program director there. Uh, next to Elizabeth, now I don't get to listen to a lot of radio, N not, I don't get to listen to as much jazz radio as I would like to because I'm typically occupied listening to 20, 30 new releases every week for my own show. But when I do listen to radio in the morning, it's got to be my favorite um, uh, drive, uh, morning drive host. And uh, along with being uh, the morning drive person, she's also the program director and the acting operations director. I think I've said that right. She wears many hats. Uh, my old friend, Elisa Clancy, from KCSM, San Mateo, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. Wow, <laughs> you did it. Oh, very good, Brad. Uh, my old friend, uh, who's been on this panel many times in the past, and I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to have him back again. He's the music director at WDNA Miami, Michael Valentine. Yeah. From KUVO Denver, we have uh, uh, an on-air host. She also hosts a Latin jazz program. She's also a musician. She's a conguero, and that's Janine Santana. Yeah. <laughs> conguero. <laughs> uh, you will certainly know of him as being one of the world's great jazz guitarists, but he also has a syndicated radio program. Please welcome John Pizzarelli. I'm going to introduce him simply as the Dean of Jazz Radio from WGBH, our good friend Eric Jackson. Yay! And assisting me once again this year uh, with, the, uh, with the audio and, and the cues and so forth, uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful jazz radio programmer. You really should check out his show. He's on top of things. Um, progressive jazz, new releases. I really admire his programming. You should listen to his show, Jazz 2K at the Saint, WVCR, Albany, New York, Jay Hunter. Yeah. 
So Elizabeth, if you can start to uh, talk a little bit about your station, give us a two minute blurb sure. on. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm located uh, on the campus of Eastern Washington University, which is in Cheney. We're right outside Spokane. Uh, we're the number uh, 92 market. Um, we play about 150 hours of jazz a week, in addition to specialty programming. Uh, we play blues, we play Latin, we do an ambient show uh, in the evening. And about a year ago, we started um, an old school show, uh, which is um, kind of old Motown soul R&B, which has really, really resonated uh, with the listening audience. We're, we're trying to expand, uh, bring uh, more people on board. Our, our audience skews older, uh, which I'm, I'm, I think probably a lot of a lot of them do. I think our uh, 63 or so is our uh, kind of sweet spot <clears throat> as far as audience goes. Um, what else? Um, we're in the. Uh, we also we're also included in the uh, Coeur d'Alene, uh, Idaho area. So our area is about five hundred thousand total. Um, she does everything at the station. Yeah, basically. Everything. Yeah, I do everything. We're not. We're not an NPR. I'm. I'm basically a free range chicken. I can do <laughs> whatever I want, um, and with very little oversight from the university. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, 150 hours of jazz, and I do all the programming for everything. And so, anyway, um, I'm really happy to be here. So. That's about it for KEWU. I'm Elisa Clancy. I'm the program director and host of the morning show for 35 years. So uh, I've been used to getting up at uh, 3.45 every morning. Ooh. I thank my husband who is here for putting up with that. For <laughs> so we do all jazz all the time, 24-7. We have everything from the beginning of recorded time until yesterday. That's, uh, we try to expand into international waters all the time. We've been streaming. We were one of the first Bay Area radio stations in general to start streaming. We had a chief engineer who thought that that was the future. And so many years ago, we started streaming at kcsm.org. Uh, we're now offering our programming in, uh, not podcasts, but you can get it archivally for two weeks with... Um, that, a program that we've got. I, I hired the very best programmers in every genre of jazz. I have swing specialists, I have bebop specialists, I have avant-garde and free jazz specialists, and what saved us is the internet, you know, because uh, terrestrially we'd sort of maxed out at 200,000 cum in the Bay Area, and we transmit all the way down to San Jose and even where Brad lives, Gilroy, <laughs> all the way up through uh, the wine country. Uh, there's also what saved us is Silicon Valley. We started getting a lot more underwriting from uh, not-for-profits and, and corporations. We have not sold out. Uh, we're still an NPR affiliate, so we can keep our streaming rights. They pay our streaming rights, and that's very important. And we probably won't be NPR too much longer. They've only got the one show. Uh, Jazz Night in America that we run. All of the rest is our generated content. That's all our content. So, And we're free-range chickens, too. Our licensee, pretty much, we go under the radar. They're not too picky about what we do. So, that's it. Um, We do about 70-plus uh, hours of jazz, not including uh, our specialty programs, uh, Latin Jazz Quarter, which run in the afternoon, future Latina at night. Uh, we have an excellent Brazilian show and an excellent reggae show that's on the weekends. Two shows that we added, kind of expanding the audience, a uh, show called Brainville, where the mayor is Charles Mingus and the policeman is Sun Ra. Yeah. So it's, it's a whole concept, <laughs> concept show, and it kind of sent around this town where Charles Mingus and Sun Ra are running the city. So they kind of send their music <laughs> around that. So wow. they've been adding, they play a lot of new music, up and coming music, something with the groove. And uh, also we added the Time Warp, which kind of goes into jazz electronica. A show that I just started and I pre-recorded, it's called Classics and Grooves. 
where we do classic funk, classic jazz, uh, even some of the newer artists like uh, Casa Overall or Makai McRaven. So we kind of been kind of expanding our audience and also kind of <coughs> keeping our core audience uh, uh, also. So, and uh, we're a pretty diverse community, so we try to cover a broad spectrum of, of jazz. It has to have a little, a little rhythm to it, so. That's right, it's your marketplace. Yeah. So what we do? Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Janine Santana, and I'm at KUVO in Denver, and our esteemed program director is also here, Arturo Gomez, and uh, we play, we've been a 24-7 jazz station for a long time. There are some other things, but they're all jazz related in some way, like I have a specialty program, Salsa Con Jazz. I'm also their uh, rotating substitute host, which is so cool because I get to do all the shows and uh, at all different hours of the day. And so there's so many different people listening and absorbing the music at all different times. Uh, KUVO is a wonderful, wonderful station that is, uh, I can't remember the exact number, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's over 95%, it might be even 98% listener supported music, which I think is absolutely extraordinary, not dependent on grants, not dependent on a university or anything like that. It's the people themselves who are listening and loving and supporting the radio station for 38 years now, pushing 39 years, I think. I also uh, have been a musician for a good chunk of my life, playing congas and Latin jazz, but also having the honor of playing on uh, other people's, you know, straight ahead jazz and some funk. And I have an internet station as well, John, I'm gonna hook up with you. And uh, it's called My VS Radio online and it is uh, VS is for validation station and I really feel strongly about validating the good music that I hear that's not just the music that's uh, coming uh, to everybody else but I purposely search out what I can find that hits me in the heart or hits me in the mind and validate it there on that station so I have that too. That station is probably about 70% jazz. Uh, and the rest of it, I go and search things out from Africa that I like, or a variety of places, all different kinds of things. And uh, it's really fun to be that free. And uh, like you said, uh, what did you say? I almost said a headless chicken. But I mean a free range, range chicken. chicken. That's what I mean, <laughs> not a headless chicken. <laughs> Um, so those 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 two radio stations pretty much occupy most of my life, and I'm so happy in it, and I'm so delighted to be asked to be on the panel where we can listen and talk about why we pick what we pick. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Uh, along with my wife Jessica Malaski, uh, we've had a show for 15 years a syndicated radio show called Radio Deluxe. Uh, and uh, we don't even uh, know how it started, really. It was one of those things where they put us in a room and we started talking and then added music. And it's, goes, it's either two hours or one hour. Depending on where you're listening, we're about 40 to 70 markets. And we're also on uh, like the WNYC app here in New York City or uh, things like that. And we're on... So, uh, it bas and we play music. It's a lot of vocal jazz, uh, it's, but it's pretty much anything. We sort of say the Great American Songbook and beyond. So we pretty much can play anything we want, which is nice, uh, and uh, and we do, which is good. So we sort of, uh, w when I spoke to a programmer once, uh, we were talking about. He said the thing I like about what your show can do is you can play things that we don't, w that we can't play, and it's uh, they quote unquote. So we have a fun show. We do it on our dining room table and send it out to the West Coast and the music gets added. So uh, that's the show. And uh, well, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, good morning. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Good morning. I'm Eric Jackson from WGBH in Boston. Um, well, as many of you know, uh, at one time we programmed more than 70 hours worth of jazz week. We are down to nine hours uh, oh. worth of, uh, of jazz live, which I uh, am the host of. And we also carry on a couple of nights. Um, a few years, years ago, G GBH started a 24-7 jazz stream. And on two nights, uh, that stream uh, airs on the station overnight. But uh, it's, it, GBH, of course, is a big um, a broadcasting outlet, and, and the TV station is the main focus of all of that. And uh, unfortunately, jazz has fallen to the position of being a little brother or the uh, sort of the orphan big brother. But uh, <laughs> I, I see my colleagues over there laughing. Uh, but it is, uh, it certainly is an interesting market because Boston is a major market. It's also a market which has Berkeley College of Music and New England Conservatory there. So we've always had, uh, and I usually announce uh, people who live in Boston, people who are from Boston, or people who have, as I say, spent time in Boston. Uh, and the number of musicians who uh, pass through Boston is incredible. So uh, in that sense, I know we have a big uh, uh, influence on a lot of the musicians that are around today because so many of them have passed through the town. Um, just with the nine hours, we are hoping and planning to, to maybe be able to bring some live programming to the, to the jazz stream. Um, now they've cut back the hours, we're hoping to get some more live hours on the stream. So the stream is uh, uh, run through uh, an algorithm. But, uh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got a lot of music to try to get through, uh, get to, and so uh, Jay, if we could cue up the first track and let's let her rip. Those of us who are uh, old school DJs, you know, we used to call it needle dropping, you know, <laughs> where you would drop a needle on a track and listen to a minute and, you know, presumably make a, a programming decision. But uh, uh, that's, you know, the snippet that we're going to get. So Eric was uh, very concerned that I was going to call on him first each time. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to call on him first this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. I would just say, from what I heard, I like that. But again, the problem with um, needle dropping or whatever you do, uh, laser dropping nowadays, I yeah, guess. Yeah, really. Uh, is that you didn't hear any solos, and you'd have to hear some. I'd have to hear some solos before I could really decide that I would add something like that. It was great what I heard, but uh, you know, solos, you know, could totally fall apart mm -hmm. when the guys start soloing. Uh, then right. we just say, you know, gr great arrangements, great orchestration, but uh, they need some more, some better soloists in the band. So no, I'm not going to play that. But what I heard is uh, would be a thumbs up. John? Yeah, I agree. Uh, the thing for our show uh, is also how long that might be. So you hear a really good section up front, and then they could so the solos could take it into you know, eight or nine minutes or something like that. And for our show, that's always something that has to be programmed specifically for yeah. segments. We have eight segments, 
in our show uh, that run you know between eight and twelve minutes. So that's always a problem is how how long things are. <coughs> Janine, I liked it. I thought I thought it was swinging. You know, if it makes me move, if it makes me kind of go, yeah, okay, then then yeah. But you know, the, the same thing. Like I I would want to know how long it is, and I have no problem with playing longer stuff if it's allowed. And certainly on my VS radio, I can play something but you know it, yeah it can't be just have nothing to say you know it can't be a nine minute song long song and and for three minutes it has something to say and the rest of it doesn't really you know but uh, but I liked it I thought I thought it was swinging I thought it was you know tight enough but also loose enough that it was you know realistic <laughs> if that makes sense yeah okay. Michael uh, yeah that was a that was a great arrangement I would be curious to see how long it is, how long that tune is. But uh, overall, I would day part it and play it in the morning, too. This, uh, I love the opening. I'll, I'll play it early in the morning. So the opening <laughs> was, I like that very much. Oh, All right. Uh, I like what Michael said, except that I would never program this in the morning. <laughs> because the, the way people use radio in the morning is if they're not swinging, there's too much tritone substitution in that for me. It's like, <laughs> You know, the tune-out factor is like, as soon as somebody with kids in the car, some mom hears that, she's like, where's my NPR? I need KQED. I got to get some news, you know. My job as program director is to lift people up, to listen to this music so people go, oh, human condition, I love it. Not too much cacophony in the morning, especially. I mean, I play a lot of medium to up-tempo tunes. I don't play a lot of minor keys. I play major keys in the morning. I would reserve this tune for one of our late night hosts. We have some excellent late night hosts would pick, that would certainly pick this in a heartbeat. And I'd be interested to see where it went to because it could go nine minutes of crazy town and I couldn't po possibly program that in the morning. So I'm not with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> See, that's what this is all about, right? <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth. Um, I'm kind of uh, more with Alyssa. Um, yeah, there's no way I would play that in the morning. <laughs> I would get lots of phone calls. Um, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> Please turn it off. Um, I, I, I thought it was great. Uh, I did you know, I was swinging. It, the, the, the arrangement was great. Um, I'd probably play it um, maybe uh, afternoon or late night. Um, and track length would be a concern. Um, it, not that I'm, you know, I, I'm okay playing, you know, eight, nine, nine minute tracks once we get over 10. If it's really good. If it's really good. I mean, that's yeah. time is, time is, you only have so much time in a day. And when somebody calls me and says, how come you're not playing my record? I say, because it, it, it's not here. It's here. You know, I, there's too many hours in it. You know, it's only a finite amount of time. That is true. Um... And let's see, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, so uh, again, the solos. Um, we don't need a crazy town solo or a few crazy town solos. Uh, but w uh, I liked what I heard. And what, what is she saying? Crazy what solos? Crazy town crazy solos. Crazy town solos in the morning. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I... Oh, that's I, when, pe when somebody's going really out, you know. <laughs> you know, when somebody Dis goes too way out. Yeah, just really dissonant. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, when, when uh, well, I had to play this track first, and you'll understand why when I tell you who it is. This is Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis and Wayne Shorter. It's a, a new album coming out, the music of Wayne Shorter. Yeah. And uh, the Groove Boys are uh, working this one, so. The solo so it's good. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs>
John, you were smiling. I'm going to start with mm. you. And, I've, and, uh, I've always liked that song. Me too. I've always loved that song. So, uh, you know, I, I'd play it. That's Where's... A Lonely Woman, right? Mm -hmm. Horace Silver. Uh, I don't, but that's a beautiful record. I, I, I'd play it. I'd play it at home. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Janine? I would play it at home, and I would follow the person that did it all over the universe. No. <laughs> I got to tell you, that's some baby making music right there. That's that's what that's about, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so too much information. Stuff. Yeah, no, not too much. That's what's happening when they're listening to that stuff. But seriously, very sultry, very pretty, and I would be very careful when I played it and what I put next to it. Uh, yeah, in more ways than one, right? Yeah. In more. <laughs> Now, I didn't say that. <laughs> you can't Michael. take him anywhere. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful record. Was that yeah. Eric Alexander with strings? Um, we're going to uh, go up and down the panel and okay. let you guys guess. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a winner right there. That's, that's, a, right. that's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. record. There's always room for beauty anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, I'd absolutely program that. Absolutely. I don't usually play slower things in the morning, but, you know, I'll make exceptions. I mean, Coltrane ballads in the morning are, you know, sure. Elizabeth? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. I'd play in the morning, too. It was beautiful. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, I, I thought it was uh, real pretty. I, I recognize the person, but I can't figure out who it is. It's somebody familiar. Uh, playing, but I did really like it. So you're going to tell us, right? I, I am going to tell you. And actually, Michael had it right. This is Eric Alexander. Yeah, it sound like um, it's Lonely Woman by Horace Silver, as, uh, as John pointed out. Uh, Eric Alexander with strings, and also uh, nice. uh, Hazel Tyne, Weber, Farnsworth, you know, the usual suspects uh, coming out on high note records. Um, so Eric Alexander with strings. Nice choice, nice. Brad. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You're on good, they're your neighbor in theirs too. Serve each other, don't compete. Bless each other, don't condemn. Stand your hand to each other with honor and respect. For us to reach the American dream, we must bust these chains within. Can we find the path to freedom by the truth in our lives? Truth or die. <laughs> Democracy's experiment is wearing thin. Yeah. Each gen. Elizabeth, I'm going to start uh, on your end this time. Um, I love the message. Um, yeah, I would play it um, probably uh, sometime in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I like to push the envelope a little bit, uh, make people think uh, a little more about things. So, yeah, I would definitely program that. Elisa. Yeah, this is an 11. I'd program this in a heartbeat. Uh, we're coming up on MLK birthday, birthday weekend. I'd, I'd put it in everyday part. Uh, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area, so we push the envelope all the time. It's very important. We have very important work to do in music right now. And so when a project like this comes in, you know, uh, Karen Allison's Suffragette Project, uh, Christian McBride doing his uh, project with um, MLK and Rosa Parks and all that, those are on the air all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never speak my politics on air, but my choice of the music speaks my politics on air. Yep. It's important, Absolutely. we do important work. Musicians do important work. And attention must be paid, especially now. Yeah, definitely, definitely program that. Uh, it's a nice sounding band also, a nice group to it. Yeah. Uh, not only a great message, but the music in itself was uh, Swinging. Yeah, swinging in the pocket. So, yeah, take that. Yeah, the, the, the 
Wawa. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was like, wow. But uh, I actually happen to know what this is. But I, what I will say is that I have played it on my VS radio. And I was very careful, again, what I put next to it there. Um, I put what the another song that's off that recording, which I don't know if you'll you'll play or not, that was just like rips your heart out right out of your chest. And then I played this after that. And, uh, uh, you know, same thing. I won't speak my politics on the air because that's just rude. I would never do that. But it's the same thing. You play the music you play, and you probably still are going to get some calls. But no matter what, that, that can happen. And I think that it's a really powerful recording. I really enjoy this recording. So, yeah, it gets, it gets played. I'll take those calls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll take them. Yeah, I'll oh, yeah. definitely take them, you know, but yeah. <laughs> they come. Yeah, those kind of, uh, for us, uh, the, new, the new jazz vocalists sometimes go in groups of things in, our, in certain sections so that we'll uh, keep those things away from, mm -hmm. like if we're playing Oscar Peterson or something, so we'll, we'll program it a certain way so that we can get those records on the air in our show. Good. Yeah. Eric. I'm the odd man out. I wouldn't play it. Uh, I just didn't like the melody that much. I thought the melody was pretty much a straight line. La, 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 la. There wasn't much variation in the melody, uh, so I don't think I would play it. Uh, this artist is uh, in the audience. This is uh, Virginia Oops. Schenck. Oops. Um, <laughs> right hear, on, girl. Hear my right battle on. cry from her new album, Battle Cry, and Kate Smith Excellent. is promoting this Very one. Good. Michael, you are ready to give us an answer on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely play that uh, uh, day party, especially shows uh, at night. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, Lisa? Yeah, I love bass clarinet. Anything with bass clarinet on it and trumpet? That <laughs> sounds great together. Um, yeah, it would be an evening, afternoon sort of thing. Uh, the avant-garde, the free guy, probably pro program that. Unless I was doing some sort of a special, it sounded like the rubber band or something. Was that, no, it's, or Keon Harold or somebody like that. Close. Yeah. I, I liked it personally. I don't know if I'd do it in the morning. It's, again, the tune out factor's too high. Those people, as soon as people start hearing electronic stuff that's a little too ear bendy, they're the tune out's there. So I have to be wary of how far out it goes. So I, I suspect it goes pretty far out. If we listen to the whole thing. So that's my thought. Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be kind of a, an evening evening program. Sure. For sure. Kick it back down to this sound, Eric. Yeah, I, I would play that. I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, it depends on how long it is, but I don't know if it fits in with what we play usually. <laughs> Janine. I would play it. I would wonder how long it is before I decided where I was going to play it. but And I wouldn't have a problem with morning. Uh, I'd probably like put it later in, in the show in the morning. But I think that's kind of like a get moving, get going, let's do this thing kind of music, right? Yeah. So I would, I would play it. And uh, I mean, I could picture walking down the street with headphones watching the people on the street here <laughs> in the city, you know, I, I would, and I like the beginning. I like the way it kind of 
started out kind of like this and then sort of builds. I, it wasn't some some music. I feel like it's kind of all like that. This kind of was like yeah. moving around a lot and and, and changing its <laughs> dynamic. And, yeah, absolutely. I would play it. How do you guys feel about the fact that now time is so fluid because we're all streaming? Yeah. So you know, somebody in Hong Kong is listening to a different day part. So yeah, oh. it's not I necessarily. I try not to a, decide what they might. Um, who's going to like it and who's not, because I'm always surprised. If I played that at, you know, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, there'd be somebody truly digging on it somewhere in the world. And my VS radio is Internet, and I have listeners in, in countries where absolutely time is flipped. Sure. So I don't even, you know, I don't even worry about it. I, I would figure if they're listening to it and they're in Hong Kong or something and they're listening to the show, they must be listening to it to it, I assume, if this is at least their second listen, because they enjoyed it. Right. So whatever time of day, what it's fine yeah. for them. Yeah. Uh, Elisa mentioned uh, Miles and Rubber Band, which, which is a great guess, but, it, but it's not that. Anybody else have any idea who, who it might be? Um, so this is, um, it's actually a tune written by Ingrid Jensen, uh, Cat's Eye, and it's off a new album coming out by Jason Miles and Kind of New. Oh, yeah. And uh, the album's called Black Magic. It's an 11 minute track. Yes, mm. I would play it. <laughs> yeah, so you can I, go to I, the bathroom. I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with length. Taking some of us in a certain age group back to our... <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, dating ourselves and loving every minute of it. Um, Eric, I'm going to start with you again. Okay. Uh, you know, I guess I have a, a problem with a lot of vocals. There are just a lot of vocals that just don't, that just don't move me. I hear them and say, that's okay. But, uh, you know, I've heard things that impress me better as vocalists, so I, and I've been told by a number of the promo people, probably in this room, who said, you don't play a lot of vocals, do you? I said, yeah, I do play a lot of vocals, but I'm not playing that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> John? I think probably just, I uh, would, I'd be interested to hear how, how the blowing is on that, what, what goes on after that, but that could go in a certain section of what we do. Janine? First of all, I'm in that age group where that song is just, it's just a badass song. But um, I don't know. I think I was kind of lukewarm to that one. I like it, of course, because I love the song, and that's, that's going to influence me right off the bat. And then I have to sit and really think about it. And uh, I'd want to hear more about what the, what the instrumentals are doing. And I know I'm, I'm mean Janine when it comes to female vocalists in particular. I really am, and I apologize for that, but that a lot of times, like, it takes a lot for me to go, oh, yeah, listen to that one, you know? So I, I think I'm kind of lukewarm on that one, but I'd want to know what the interplay is between that voice and the voice of the muted trumpet or an unmuted trumpet with it. That would interest me. I'd want to hear it. Does that make sense? Michael. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I kind of have the <laughs> same sentiment as Janine. I need to hear just a, just a tad more of it. But the groove was nice. Yeah. The vocal was, uh, it was okay. Yeah. Is that Keanu Linnell? Was that who that was? Okay. Um, you actually, know, I don't, I don't remember who the vocalist is. Yeah, it's, imp track. it's important to play this music, but it's also important that the artist brings their own stuff to it, you know, because it's a great lyric. It's a really potent lyric right now. 
for people to hear. It's for a good one for young people to hear, mm -hmm. too. Uh, but, you know, the guy's blowing the Benny, ba Benny Bailey kind of solo over right, it, yeah, you know? Awesome. So I want to hear them stretch out. So, right. yeah, I'd like to hear more on it. Uh, I like the vocalist. I, I thought she was good. Um, more passion, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I want fight. I want them to fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, love the song. Um, I'm of that age, too. Yeah, me too. Um, good groove. Um, I definitely want to hear more, though. I'm not sure that this track is really representative of the whole album, but I, I really wanted to pick this track because it's uh, the vocalist is not the leader, uh, and there are instrumental tracks on this. This is a so, young trumpeter out of Texas. Is that right, Doc? Austin, Texas. His name is Jeff Lofton, and uh, compared to what, of course, and the album is called Jericho, and uh, Dr. Jazz is working this one. Yeah, nice. Ah, interesting. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> So I'm gonna yeah, that dude's going to be so pissed that you cut off his solo. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's pretty swinging. Kept my interest for a while. I'd be interested to see where it went. Yeah. Uh, I like the arrangement. Uh, that's What tune is that? It's um, Quicksilver. 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 Yeah, da 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 Yeah. Okay, that's horse. Yeah, horse yeah. tune. Yeah, I liked it. I'd, I'd find a place for it in the morning. I like to think about... Like I said, that there's some young alto player in the back seat of a car going to school, going, can you rent me a horn? Boy, I like that Charlie Parker record. That's great. Who's that guy playing? You know, that's how we pass it on. That's how we pass it on. That's the only way we can pass it on this way, because we don't advertise. You know, it's got, got to turn the kids on to it. That's how I got tuned into it, is, you know, my parents were playing Horace Silver records during pin pinnacle parties, pinnacle parties at home. So, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. So, yeah, I'd play it. Michael? Uh, likewise, I played also. Uh, is it a total all big band record? Uh, I, yes, I believe. Yes, yeah, I believe the answer yeah. is yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely would play it. Janine? Yeah, I'd play it. Yeah, yeah, I'd play it. I, first of all, I, I love big band. I encourage people to go hear big bands live because it's a completely different animal, and then you appreciate it so much when you hear these recordings too, a lot, you know. So I'm seeing, I was seeing flowing skirts and, and swing dancers all over the place, you know. I'm starting to see things. <laughs> yeah. I'm always for flowing skirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I I play it. I again, I I would I would want I would want to know about the length of it again, you yeah. know. The length of the skirts? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't care about the I length of the that. skirts. Boom, boom. I just can see the dancers. We are this going into fun. the new 20s, right? <laughs> That's the new 20s. Right? Okay. John? Yeah. yeah, being that we have a uh, an hour or 2 hour show, it's just a, ma a matter of how long those things are and where they'll fit. John, um, what's, the, what's the ratio to uh, singers to instrumentals that you play? What do you think? That's a good question. Depending on the week, I mean, I'd, I would say we probably play more vocalists than instrumental music. Really? So, yeah. Uh, like 60-40? Like yeah, 60-40, yeah, 70-30, somewhere in there. Um, I'd like to hear more of it before I make a decision whether or not to play it. But I think Michael said something a few minutes ago that was interesting, too. Uh, he said that, I think the last thing was, he said he thought it was okay. And 
and this is what the next panel, radio panel, will deal with, too, is the abundance of music that we're getting. Right. And when I think of with all the music we're getting, sometimes being okay is not okay. That's yeah. right. It's not enough. Being we, okay we is not enough. We just have so much music. It's like, if you're only okay, well, you know, I think I could, I've got something here in the pile that's better than okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to hear a completely, wholly developed, authentic voice. That's it, in whatever genre of, of jazz. It's like the, the commercials with, you know, the, the, the surgeon walk, you know, the guy the, the guy who's going to be operated on. Yeah, that's right. So, you know. He's okay. Oh, yeah, he's okay. <laughs> Only okay? Uh -oh. um, Elizabeth, I don't think we got to you. Uh, yeah, um, I liked it. Um, I'd like to hear more of it, but uh, I'd more than likely play it. It was a, a little bit unfair that you know, we, we did cut off the solo, but in fact, the leader what? didn't even get into his solo. This is another trumpeter, uh, Valery Panamarov. Oh, wow. Uh, his new album, and that's Quicksilver, his new album is called Our Father Who Art Blakey. And uh, wow. Dr. Jazz is also working this one. Um, so what are you started, paying, Brad? What are you paying, Brad, doctor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, folks, I, uh, before we get into the uh, before we get into the next track, I just want to announce because we have so much music to get to in, in this this uh, outstanding panel, we're going to keep right on going uh, up to the end. But if you want to chat with any of us, you can chat with us out in the hall. We're going to uh, have an opportunity to do that because there isn't a panel going on across the hall, so there'll be room to do that. And then coming up uh, at 11 o'clock in here is the is the second. Jazz Week session, so stick around for that if you can. Okay, Jay? Elizabeth, what do you think? I loved it. It was nice and uh, it had a great uh, beat and nice and tight. And uh, yeah, I loved it. I'd absolutely play it. Elisa, major scale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it's all right. I'd find a place for it. I wouldn't be passionate about it in the morning because it sounds like David Benoit with a beat. I'm like, <laughs> and I know Benoit, I mean, we're pals. But you know, he, he broadcasts his syndicated show in LA every morning and when I go down to LA and I'm taking my walk, I'm like, dude, this so sucks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, Pizzarelli, don't you tell him I said that. <laughs> so I yeah, it's you know, yeah, I w I'm I'm sorry, I'm a jazz head. You know, I'm a jazz head. I'm, you know, if it's if it's hip hop based and blues based and, you know, African rhythm based, that's fine. But that doesn't do anything for me. It's not beautiful to me. It's okay. Michael. Uh, <sighs> <sighs> really? That's all that? All that? No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a nice tune because sometimes I use these particular type of tunes just to kind of just kind of break up the set, you know, you just hear straight ahead, straight ahead. So you might sprinkle this in, maybe you might play something right before the news, right before the top of the hour. So sure. I wouldn't like play it every day, but I like need something to kill the hour with, you know, have at it. I agree. You know, and it's also, we used to talk about, you know, the gateway drugs to jazz. You know, was smooth jazz really a gateway drug to jazz? No. It's no. not. <laughs> it's not. So I'm not going to turn anybody on to jazz playing this, right? 
you know, my peripheral listeners will go, oh yeah, that's okay. You know, and it's background music. It's really, and jazz is really a foreground music for me. It's foreground listening. I want to teach the kids how to listen to the rhythm section. Oh yeah, the guy's playing over the changes. She's playing over the changes. Oh, I, I hear it, I hear it. That's my goal. That's my goal. Janine? Uh, well, <laughs> stop that. Well, <laughs> I, my first thought was I, I wish, and maybe it was the speakers, I wish that was an acoustic piano. I, my first thought was that, is, that it was an electric piano. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't grab onto it with that sound. And I don't know that I would play it. I might give it to, on my VS radio, the guy that does more electronic music kind of stuff. But I, I, wasn't, I wasn't connecting with that at all. It was just really nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was really nice. <laughs> but, not, but not something that got me, uh, that I felt like I could engage with it at all. Yeah. Okay, John? Yeah, I feel the same way. I've, I, I, if you're gonna have something on, in what we have in an hour or two hours, you want something, I just felt it's straight line. I hear it mm -hmm. a bumper as a bumper tune too. Yeah, like yeah. A, up to the top of the hour or something. Top of the hour. But I'd still get calls on it. And the weather in additional cities to follow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coming up the, at the top. In the interest of, the of time, I'll just say no. <laughs> so. <laughs> Right on, Eric. Yeah. It's a, a new one coming out by Japanese pianist Senri Oe. And uh, the album is called Hmm. And uh, that was The Look. It's uh, Mike Carlson. That's a good title for it. Sending this to you. Hmm. So. I got to start with Mr. Mr. Pizzarelli. Yeah. I think we have enough records of four. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I mean, it's a good record. I think it's a good record. I really do. But I, I'm sort of like, I'm, that's my feeling. Sorry. <laughs> Janine? I think it's comfortable. <laughs> I think it's very. I'd 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 play it. It's another one that I wouldn't be jumping up and down about, you know. But I I'd play it. I like that kind of like that kind of wettish, you know, Stan Getzy kind of. I like that sound. I like that sound. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd play it. But again, it would be one that I would have to really think about what I put on either side of it. What is it going to segue into, you know? I I. Okay. Yeah. Michael. Yeah, I, I like it. Kind of reminds me of Jim Guffrey. They're kind of the yeah. Jim Guffrey three, that, yeah. that type of style. And uh, yeah, I could definitely find a place, find a place for that. Mm -hmm. Alisa. Yeah, I'm with Janine. It's comfort food. Uh, it's great swinging for the morning. I, I love the uh, the sound. I think it's swinging. I'd program it. Three and a half stars. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Three and a half stars out of eight. Yeah. <laughs> no. The less you know, the better. I liked it. It was swinging. I'd, I'd find some place for it, yeah. Sure. Good. Eric? I'm not sure that I would play it. I'd have to hear more. But uh, right off the top of my head, I would say that uh, the solo didn't catch my ear and the tune we've heard a million times. <laughs> so you had to bring something more to it. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I happened to pick that track, you know, because of the familiarity, but, uh, but Charlie Apicella, who is uh, here in the audience, right uh, on, guitarist, Good. and um, he's got uh, a new, new record coming out, classic guitar, did I, is, is 
That's the title of the album, right? Yeah. Did I get that right? Okay. And four is, of Who's course. The You want to tell us the other musicians on it? I didn't write them down. Um, um, Roy Cumming is the bassist. He used to play with um, Eddie Wilson and Al Haig and Alan Porter. So okay. It's, not, it's, it's different from my usual records. It's not an Iron City record. Yeah. Is it all straight ahead? It's all straight ahead. Standards? Yeah. Final so oh, right on. Oh. It's very different from so. what I usually do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. So um, <clears throat> we had the comment earlier, uh, you know, about four, and you know, we've all heard that standard 150,000 times before. But um, anybody recognize what what standard this is? It, it takes a while to, to develop, and unfortunately, we, you know, can't play the whole thing. But uh, anybody recognize what the changes are on this one? It wasn't body and soul. That's no. Sure. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <I> like you. <laughs> It took me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael, uh, let's let's start with you. Uh, I, I, what do you think? I just I, I need to hear more of it to, just to see exactly where it was going. Did we catch that in the beginning of the tune, or is that the middle of the tune? A uh, beginning, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I need to hear a little bit more. Of Thirty that. in. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, sorry, Elisa. <laughs> Oh man, I love where it was going. I just love, I love this. I love the tension that they were going for. I could never program it in the morning because people would run off the road. But, <laughs> but I personally adore this. I love the way the music, it's like a, a Mary Halverson or Julian Lodge or something like that. It was, I love what they were doing, creating the tension. I, I, want, I want people to really feel the one and not know where it is. Feel it, feel it, feel it, so. Yeah, I would have uh, my Greg Bridges, who does wonderful um, outside avant-garde, um, you know. But then, every once in a while, I want to throw in a John Diversa tune in the morning, you know. So it was just, <laughs> just to shake the kids up and go. Ooh, <laughs> you know, it's important. It's the you know, it's the Whitney Ballet at Sound of Surprise. I try to do it every day. So, yeah, I'd program it. It'd just be later, probably. Elizabeth. Yeah, I'd like to hear more, mm. for sure. Um, I don't play a lot of avant, but I am I've been thinking about adding a show because I know there's there are a lot of people that that like it and want to hear it. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily discount it, but uh, it would definitely be if I were to play it, it would be late night. It sounded like a Led Zeppelin tune, like they were going to. <laughs> um, Eric, um, I liked I liked what I heard there too. I'd like to hear more of it, but I I did like what I heard and I would uh, certainly consider playing it. Okay. John? Oh, I'd definitely play it, no question about it, because it goes right to the stuff that I <laughs> that I do late night, because I'm 
you know, midnight, uh, midnight to two is when my show is on, but I'm also the morning guy in Stuttgart because I've got people listening to me in Germany. Uh, so I don't want them to drive off the road, but on the other yeah, hand, really. I, on the other hand, I also want them to enjoy themselves and they'd enjoy themselves with that. And John number two. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, that record it sounds like how I feel after I told Charlie that I didn't like that he recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we love you, Charlie. We do. I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for guts. Yay for guts. And I liked the bass and I liked the way it built. I would have to hear more of it and know how long it goes because, boy, that can get dangerous because it can start out and be really engaging and really have a lot of tension, like she was saying, and then just stay that way. And then I would feel like it was like jam session. Yeah, but then you have the at release at the end. See? <laughs> That's the thing about but, tension. But is yeah, release. I thought I thought it, I thought it, it had some good tension. So it it built. It was gutsy, but be careful. That's that's what I felt. We're in a dangerous business. No, be careful. Not, if you take something good and do it for too long, <laughs> then all of a sudden everybody starts wandering off somewhere else. Oh, like the Basie Band? You yeah. Know? You know, no, you well, like a jam session that was time. really fun but went too long and people, you know, lose their, their, lose their form. They lose their thought. I got you. But I, I liked it. Yeah, you know, for me, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna play a standard, it's got to be an original take, and I'm gonna be all over this one. This artist is also uh, in the audience. The leader is drummer Ernesto Servini. A drummer, of course. And where uh, are you, <clears throat> Ernesto? Right on. Um, drummer, of course. Yeah, yeah. Groove marketing. Groove marketing and promotion is also working this one. It's uh, softly as in a morning sunrise. Oh. Ah, no shit. It, oh. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> new album now Tetrahedron. I hear that. Now and uh, Near Felder on uh, guitar. Excellent, nice. excellent. Elizabeth, let's start on your end. Yep, I totally play it. I totally play it too. Yep. Anytime. That's it. Michael? <laughs> oh, you say? I already talked a lot, man. Oh. I'm just. I'm done. <laughs> He's waiting. Yeah. Yes, yes, I like that. I like that very much. Nice, nice groove to it. I like that very much. Yeah, I would like it. And I'd want to wear a fedora when I'm listening to it. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> It's pretty groovy, yeah. Uh, I'd like to see where, where it's going from there. But that be, but it's good, good record. Okay, I, I agree with basically what was said down the line. I, I liked what I heard, and I like to hear, hear where it goes from there too. Yeah. New record uh, coming out on Sunny Side by uh, Michael Wolf. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, um, along with. Uh, Alan Mednard, two two players that I really adore, Alan Mednard and Ben Allison. So nice. great. Yeah. Thank you. 
Eric. Um, I liked it. I, I wasn't crazy about it, but I'd like to hear more of it. Um, it didn't turn me off, so I'd like to hear more of it. Okay. John? Uh, I'll go with what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Janine? I've been in that traffic jam. <laughs> it felt like a traffic jam to me. It was going to be like, stop, go, yeah, stop, yeah. go. Play something short. Long with it. No, start. No, wait. <laughs> I loved that. I loved it. But I, I would want to... I would want to see where it goes to okay, before fair playing. Michael, it. Yeah. Uh, I like I like that very much. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like late '60s uh, Bobby yeah. Hutcherson, kind of open, a little free, but really inside. So I, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's an excellent playing. Is it Jackie Terrason and Stefan Harris? Um, you yeah. are you are partly right. Warren Wolf. Um, it, I believe it's Stefan on the vibes, and uh, this is actually Theo Hill. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, new one coming out on Positone. Um, the album's called Reality I'm, Check. I'm kind of with Janine about it. It's a little bit too traffic jammy for me for the morning. Yeah, because I don't want people... Well, I don't want them to crash, but yeah. I think it's cool. <laughs> well, I, it, uh, unlike Eric, yeah. I, it did grab my ear. I, I, liked, I wanted to hear the call and response. I, wanted to, I was locked into that. But I don't know how long it goes, and in the morning, listening time is, is very short and protracted, so, yeah. Um, Elizabeth, we uh, skipped you before I gave, uh, uh, gave it away, but... Uh, no, that's fine. Um, I'm good. Um, yeah, I liked it. it. Yeah, I definitely get the traffic jammy thing. Um, I would probably play it, uh, you know, not first thing in the morning for sure, but... Uh, <laughs> sorry. I wouldn't either. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. No, that's usually. Well, We're going to yeah. try to get to one more track uh, real quickly, but uh, before we do that, because we're just about out of time, but uh, once again, Eric Jackson, John Pizzarelli, Janine Santana, Michael Valentine, Elisa Clancy, Elizabeth Ferris. I'd like to thank this outstanding panel for, for being here and participating. It's been a lot of fun. and uh, Thanks thank you for you, uh, Brad, for putting that together, because yeah. I know it takes a lot of work. Technical glitch. Yeah. <laughs> USB device not detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> Reboot. Nope, it's just not accepting it. Oh, bummer. Yeah, Better hold it up to the mic. Do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, hold it up to the mic. How long is too long for a track? <laughs> Interesting thought. Well, if it's, you know, jazz is, is, is a developmental is, form. Yeah. This is, this is the dead air that we've all experienced. <laughs> if it's a really, really good arrangement of something, there you go. When it stops having something to say. So we apologize. Yeah, when it stops following. having something to say. Well, we've run out of time anyway, but um, let me just tell you who this is. It's it's a new album by uh, tenor saxophonist Russ Nolan. So uh, he's, I believe he may be here in the audience. So Russ, are you here? I know he's here, here, but maybe not in the room. But anyway, we gave it a go. Anyway, uh, thanks once again uh, for all of you being here. Thanks to our fantastic panel. Thank you, Jay, for all your help. Thanks to the house. <laughs>